Hello everyone and welcome to my talk on the role of FTG technology in the search for new and hidden plays in Indonesia. My name is Colin Murphy, Chief Geoscientist with Bell Geospace. FTG, as many of you are aware, is a much considered and valued technology to have as part of an exploration program. We've seen, all seen many wonderful maps and telling anomaly patterns from servers across the world and how FTG advances work on these programs for both oil and gas and mineral exploration. We've recently updated our workflows at Bell and to make these maps much more accessible in terms of geological reasoning. And so in today's presentation, we will look at some of these new advances, what it is we are now retrieving from the data and how the geological information being identified is used to map geological plays. As part of this, I will share with you some working examples from recent survey work in Indonesia, where the focus is very much on the search for new and hidden plays to fully exploit the resource rich country. But first, let's have a look at Indonesia itself. Indonesia is host to numerous large scale sedimentary basins. Many are producing and mostly in the western part, and many are non producing or have yet to be drilled and mostly in the eastern part. The successful plays are well understood and range from standard synrit post rit structuring to deep water plays in the Kutai Basin. Others are less understood or hidden somewhat and include intra sub volcanic plays to the south in Java and collisional tectonic plays out in the Banda Arc to the east. The search for new and hidden plays are now the subject of increased focus amongst the exploration community. And in today's presentation, we will see the value proposition presented by FTG. The examples we present will be a regional prospecting exercise offshore Tanambar Island and a play mapping and prospect evaluation exercise, both from the prolific Upper Kutai Basin. Play models, as we understand, and we all use them, and they are very much key and important for successful uh, exploration in the new areas out in Indonesia. The, this graphic, as you can see, it will be familiar to many of you. It captures the key stages in exploiting a region or a geological trend's resource potential. The start of the workflow commences with a regional evaluation exercise, particularly in those basins that are poorly understood. You will see from the pyramid that very much a part of this early stage regional evaluation is consideration of gravity and magnetic data. Such data covers large tracts of land in a very quick and timely fashion, but their offering tends to be low in resolution. Their key offering is mapping the presence of basins, prominent structures, and how basement manifests itself in terms of basin shape. Regional seismic is often a part of this, but that really comes into its own with basin evaluation and onwards. However, the step change from regional to basin evaluation can often be quite costly in terms of time between initial data acquisition and evaluation to then deciding where to place the seismic lines. This is where FTG is most proactive. We see FTG as a step change by expediting workflows, making it a cost efficient technology for when it comes to identifying key targets in a basin and deciding where to, plan, where to accurately locate and plan your seismic work program. Of course, FTG strength is with imaging targets showing a clear density contrast in a basin setting. Very often, this adds, at the, adds value at the play and prospect evaluation stage in the sense that FTG offers an additional step change through usage in seismic processing workflows to resolve those imaging challenges in areas where you have steep faults, volcanics, salt, or carbonate. So in order to understand where the value of FTG in this uh, play model concept, it's good for us to go back and remind ourselves what are we dealing with? What is FTG and what does it bring to the exploration community? FTG is a full spectrum or broadband gravity technology that when combined with legacy gravity data, allows optimal usage of gravity in an exploration context from basin modeling to prospect and structural mapping workflows. The instrument itself directly measures the rate of change of the gravity field in all directions, and then through an intuitive processing workflow, produces a stable tensor and gravity field that is directly compliant with existing gravity data. A gravity potential is generated from each of the six outputs from the FTG, is then stacked and averaged to produce a stable high signal to noise product. The net result is a broadband data set that offers the highest resolution. Like all good science, the multi-measurements made by the FTG are described mathematically. Here we invoke matrix mathematics and describe the FTG output as a tensor. The tensor is described by having three component axes that vary in the vertical Z and both horizontal X and Y directions. 
For geology, we relate how the field varies in each tensor component as a response to a target structure, such as that depicted in the graphic, in this case a fault block. X, X and Y, Y measure the rate of change of the field in the horizontal directions and are particularly suited for mapping curvature as expressed on geological structures. These are often shown as rounded basins, structural ridges, thrust bowls, or elongated fault blocks. X, Z and Y, Z measure the downward pull of the field as it changes in the X and Y directions, and when combined, directly map edges defining geological contacts, be they structural or stratigraphic, as in faults or unconformities, etc. And then ZZ, that measures the rate of change of the field in the vertical direction and equates to the first vertical derivative normally computed from gravity. However, here it is the measured entity, it retains high frequency signal normally lost during processing of gravity data. FTG directly measures ZZ and the five independent components, XX, XZ, XY, YY, and YZ. The individual tensor components are then combined into three primary elements that describe the rate of change of the field in the horizontal and vertical gradients and the curvature of the, of the field reflecting geological complexity in the subsurface. The impact value from TZZ is, is high. And it is high accurate depiction of the field as it relates to geology. We see clear tracking of basins and fault blocks quite, quite accurately in the, in, the, the, in the map. These are located on the flank of the shallow basement of an overall to the shallow basement in the south. The total horizontal curvature is retrieved by combining the horizontal components and the maximum curvature is shown in red and the maps identify curved anomalous features associated with the basins and fault block geology. We see from the TZZ image that the maximum curvature is associated with the basin responses. The final element is the total horizontal gradient generated by combining XZ and YZ and the maximum peak values in these they map or show fantastic correlation with the edges on the TZZ they map the edges of basins and faults and we use, uh, working with these three tensor representations of the field often involve working with them individually to map contact elements fold axes and basins however it is also possible to work with a combined representation from these to build fast-track tensor displays of subsurface geology. We do this by color blending the three primary tensor elements as a single map representation, like that shown on the left. Color blending is an exciting development for geophysics as it enables a clear and concise means of visualizing multi-component data sets in a single display. Spectral decomposition in the seismic world combines different spectral content from 3D volumes using color blending to track geology. For FTG, we color blend the primary elements. We colorize the TZZ with shades of red, THC with shades of green, and the THG with shades of blue. The mix of colors produced is reflective of the FTG response from the subsurface geology. Yellows and white colored anomalies to indicate the presence of high density fault blocks or ridges, positive TZZ and the positive curvature and the positive gradient. Whereas the green kyan anomalies point to the presence of basins, this is where we get a positive curvature expression, but a negative TZZ. Then those anomalies colored blue are thin, locating contact, contact lineaments. The magenta colors point to a high density change along fault zones. That's where you have a positive density change from TZZ and the horizontal gradient. And we see that quite clearly on this other end of the fault block. The impact of this display is clear. We quickly map the primary target structures in the survey area. The image on the left shows the gravity field retrieved from the tensor data. This is produced directly from the high signal to noise gravity potential generated from the tensor data. Its strength is that it has been generated from using all of the measured data and not just one single component. The final product captures the same signal bandwidth as that on offer with the tensor data and is remarkable in its ability to retrieve coherent high frequency signal with, with clarity. And we also get the longer wavelength information as well, which is fantastic. We can see this correlation more easily if we make the gravity anomaly field semi-transparent and expose the signal from the tensor data from underneath. The sharpened expression on the basins and the fault blocks is clear. However, we also note the detail from the tensor data that defines the longer wavelength gravity anomaly in the southeastern sector. We can see quite neatly how we go back and forth in the transition 
and how the value of the tensor comes through. In addition to that, we can then work directly with the total horizontal curvature and extract structural information uh, by mapping and locating the most, uh, um, the most expression, those anomaly patterns that give the most expression, be they formulating higher density, localized high density areas in the form of uh, localized ridges or in the localized lower density sequences in, this, in the basin infill. And then with the total horizontal gradient, we can extract the liniment information, the contact liniments, and generally associate them with, cont with faulted contacts. And from, by, from combining these two, we can produce the geological play map. And here we see the significant improvement or the value of the FTG in the sense that it presents clear geological targets from all of the tensor components and displayed as a single map. To help us to appreciate what we see in this, we can zoom in on this display and we can see quite neatly where we have the gravity and tensor expression of this basement feature. And on that, we see a series of, of, of narrow ridges on the northern flank of that basement block. And then through the analysis of the data, we get localized expressions of perhaps fracturing, prospect of fracturing, basement fractures as a good play to follow up. So what does FTG offer for exploration in Indonesia? Quite a lot, actually, and, and, and this is important to see what the value that it can bring to the table. Uh, the first thing that we notice is that it allows us to build a total gravity field, see from the regional right down to the localized uh, geology. And then we can have the ability to resolve both basement depth and density with accuracy, and also the density contrasts within the basin itself and build these clear geological play maps. Once we have all that information, of course, we can then analyze the tensor data to examine for fault blocks and closed structures and the carbonate, and also have a look at the different uh, fault patterns and work out the fault frameworks. All this is ideal to help with seismic and well planning exercises to be followed up on. And overall, FTG gives us a cost effective exploration technology, helping to advance the, 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 your programs. We'll now look at some of the case histories. And these are from Southeast Asia and across Indonesia. Bell has an incredible amount of experience in Southeast Asia. We've been acquiring data continuously there since 2012. The case histories I wish to share you are a fold and thrust belt mapping example from the Banda Arc region, a play mapping and a play prospect evaluation exercise from the Kutai Basin. These are excellent examples of FTGs being used to de-risk exploration challenges in those areas. The case histories that I'm going to show you, some of them have been published in part and presented at previous conferences, and others will have updated information. And we're greatly appreciative to our clients for their permission to be able to show these new results and share them with you today. The first case history is from a regional FTG survey, two kilometer line spacing, acquired for Saka Energy over the West Yamdina Tanambar Islands on the Banda Arc. The Banda Arc locates the Miocene collision between the Australian plate to the south and Indonesia to the north, where both sides had endured a period of relative quiescence with sedimentation on a passive margin setting during the Mesozoic and Paleogene. The Australian side is well explored and shows immense prospectivity, the, with a number of producing gas fields, most not, notably Abadai at 14.7 trillion cubic feet of gas. The objective of the FTG survey here is to identify the prospectivity on the, on the Indonesian side, and in particular, likely extension of graben systems. The gravity signal retrieved from the FTG data indicates a northerly extension of the Calder graben across that band of arc, and the positive gravity anomaly, anomalies locate density contrasts within the thrust and fold belt, facilitating mapping of complexity within the arc itself. With the FTG data, we have the strategic advantage of being able to separate a signature pattern according to depth or perceived depth. And in this case, we, we break it down into three depth intervals. The shallow, the first sequence is the TZ, TZ depth interval one. This is largely picking up in a higher frequency content and is sensitive to geology at around 1,000 to 2,000 meters depth. In the second interval map, we're looking at primarily anomalous expressions from two, two and a half to about four or five kilometers depth. And it was quite intriguing. We got a series of negative anomalies being able to trace right across the region. 
The final one is the longer wavelengths picking up in the deeper structure and the regional extent of the geology in the area. To help us to examine that in a little bit more detail and what the FTG brings to this area is that we can construct um, a, a cross section which is taken from Andy Kazawandi's paper that was presented at the AAPG in 2018. The, survey, the interpretation that you see is built from seismic, from geological reasoning, and also from the FTG and magnetic data that was acquired on the survey. The, you see that the area is quite complex, and we can have a look at the first data set. This is, shows the magnetics, and um, taking the analytic signal, all of the warm positive uh, features are located generally to the north and generally indicative of shallow basement in a thick-skinned environment. But as we come south along the profile, there's less magnetic content, indicating a deeper depth of basement. And we see that, particularly that there's more of a thin-skinned tectonic regime at this stage down here. If we then look at the, the FTG data, and this helps us to fix what it is we're seeing, that a lot of these positive linear anomalies are associated with the thrust sequences in the shallow section. By then looking at the intermediate anomalous range, we can get beneath that, and we can see two clear positive structures or fault lines evident in the seismic, and these are tagged in this area in the, in the FTG. What is fantastic in this that the negative anomalies, they allow us to infer the existence of these structures away from the seismic line going further to the east. And then finally, the regional expression is that from the, uh, the, the longer wavings and a sink basement expression with largely positive anomalies associated with the band of arc and also shallow basement to the north. So the value proposition from FTG for this project is clear ability to identify the primary structural trends and identify prospectivity beneath the shallow thrust faults. Moving now to the upper Kutai Basin, this is a very large and prolific basin playing host to numerous gas and gas fields. The basin itself is quite thin, three to four kilometers in, in the north, increasing in thickness to near 14 kilometers in the offshore uh, between Kalimantan and Sulawesi. In this particular case history, we're going to look at the, uh, the arm of the basin at the western end. And what we have here are a series of Eocene raged aged rifting controlled by northeast southwest orientated basement faults. So in many ways, we're looking to map basins and blocks in the area. Then after a period of quiescence, we had a development of a carbonate platform during the Oligocene and a pronouncement and development of a series of build-up structures, one that hosts a known gas field. And then at a late stage Miocene compression event, we had inversion along these pre-existing extensional structures, creating, manifesting itself in a series of anti-formal ridges across the area. So the objectives of the FTG in this particular project was one, to map basement or locate it, two, to identify the carburet or potential for carburet buildups, and three, to map and, and the, the natural extent of these plastic structures uh, in the shallow section. We can now have a look at the data. The image on the left is the final process the TZZ component from the FTG. And you can see that there's a fantastic uh, delineation of clear structures, some of the larger ones following the northeast southwest trend that you'd expect from the, the larger basins themselves. But superimposed on that, we get a series of narrow linear ridges picking up on the shallow structures. Looking at the total horizontal curvature, and remember this is telling us where we have structures and it's picking up on where we have these linear ridges on the base shallow basement and these linear expressions within the basinal area itself as well. And then the total horizontal gradient is picking up on the edges of these features, and this is the anomalous peak in here would delineate the contact information quite neatly. We can have a look at the gravity expression from the, the FTG data, and here we get to see a weakened expression associated with the known gas field, which is a carbon buildup at two and a half thousand meters depth. <coughs> and that is surrounded by the, the, the deeper Eocene uh, rift basins themselves. We can then strip away the gravity and have a look at the contribution of the tensor information beneath that, and we get a very good sharpened delineation expression of structures within the Eocene itself and also in the shallower section. And here's the tensor itself. The white, yellow colors, remember, are there picking out in the higher density contrasts with showing curvature and gradient, whereas the colder colors are picking out on, yes, with curvature, but with lower density sequences. When we look at the gravity, we can see that we have large and smaller scaled 
anomalous features being presented. And the idea in here is the first is to go in and separate that signature pattern and see what we can learn from the data in terms of and relating it to the geology. We do this as it's a bit like your regional residual separation. In this case, we call it depth interval anomaly map one for the residual and depth interval anomaly map two for the regional field. And when we look at the regional field, it's a depth sensitivity of two to five kilometers, and we know those features at two and a half thousand meters. We certainly get an expression of the deeper basins and the and the fault blocks of the base shallow embasement. Then we look at the depth interval of around 1,000 meters, and we get a good focus anomalous expression of all these uh, these linear ridges, which are associated with the anti-formal structures that are known in the area. We then do our analysis on the total horizontal curvature data uh, for each of the DIA1 and DIA2. We can then start to appreciate and understand the distribution of the key structures and, and build up a sense of understanding of the important plays to target. In addition to that, we can get a map of the alignment pattern taken directly from the total horizontal gradient. When we look at the structures, the warm colors, remember, they're lo areas of local high density. The cold colors are lo areas of local lower density. And we see a series of patterns quite neatly in formulating at this end. And then we look at the, the DIA2, the deeper interval. We get a grand, strong sense of a, an increased thickness of lower density sequences at this end. But more interestingly, we have I, I, it's, it was, we have a rather explicit expression associated with the known gas field, and this is the carbonate buildup, and we see others lookalikes following the same structural trend. We can then bring in our lineaments and onto each map, and we start putting things into a bit of perspective and allow us to identify potential for play types. Looking at the shallow section first, we see a series of plastics or structures, and all focused and located quite neatly on the edges of where we have these antiformal ridges. And certainly this, these would be of interesting targets to follow through on. In particular, when we look at this one, we can see it's quite shallow, but that there's likelihood a, a deeper, thicker sedimentary sequence identifying the source rock potential for charging on the structure. We then look at the map on the right, and we can see and track and identify the additional anomalous patterns that show similar characteristics to that associated with the known gas field, and we can identify them as potential for gas field or, or cavernous structures in the area. So with that, we can build up a nice, neat depiction, a quick workflow of working with FTG to quickly identify targets and geological play maps for, for follow-up with its seismic work programs and the like. Our final case history which to share is a little to the east, but still in the upper Kutai Basin. The onshore part of the basin is characterized by a series of thrust and fold structures resulting from inversion along pre-existing extensional faults, and these show this prominent northeast trend. It is these inversion anticlines that form the major structural trapping mechanisms in the Kutai Basin. Some of these have an excess of 28 trillion cubic feet of gas about them and are quite prominent in good production. For this particular project that we were asked to target was to have a look at a another anticlinal structure that parallels the, the, the Sanga Sanga field area. And these are quite important. And uh, the operator of the acreage is Q Energy, and they have largely been very helpful in, in showing, releasing information to us to build this particular case history, and also together with uh, taking work from uh, the papers published in 2018 and 2020. The Pellerang area anticlinal structure or, or terrain feature is located following a northeast southwest trend paralleling the Sanga Sanga anticline. When you look at the information available to Q Energy and their approach to evaluating this, they had already identified and developed the Samutan field, which is a small gas field, and identified potential plays elsewhere along that structure. The data that they have available to them is a 2D seismic grid and the FTG survey, and they've used the FTG survey to refine the seismic and help with the seismic processing workflow. The big challenge, of course, we're working in seismic and going across these steeply dipping uh, fold structures is the, the dispersion of energy, and it's quite challenging to pick up the edge of the, the structure and the seismic information. This is fortunate where we can have a look at the, the gravity from the FTG <clears throat> right along the entire northeast southwest trend, and we get a very positive, prominent positive anomalous structure associated with the anticline. And then as we look along in here, we see this variation and complexity and the amplitude of the anomaly from being quite low at the northern end of it to quite high 
in the in, in as we go down further to the south. This indicates that there's variable depth to the top of this feature and its likelihood of, of some form of additional structuring. One of these, of course, is that they have been identified and have been examined and are believed to be the development of localized half grab and pull, pull apart basin type structures uh, resulting from transfer fault motion that serves to fragment and dissect the anticlinal structure itself. So we now look at the FTG, the tensor information. The image on the left is the TZZ. The survey was acquired with a 400 meter line space survey and infill to 200 meters, so we get a lot more detail at the southern end. But here we have Sambutan located on a series of minor small scale anomalies. We then look at the horizontal curvature. We pull out quite clearly the extent of the, the, the anticlinal structure itself and get a hint of localized density contrasts on either side going away from that anticline and perhaps the hint of another feature at depth going out to the west. And we can look at the total horizontal gradient and the peaks of the anomalies allow us to map and locate the edges of this feature at depth. Then we examine the gravity again. We've seen this already, but this is where we strip away the gravity and have a look at the contribution of the full tensor beneath that. And we can have a look at the tensor and we are mapping out quite neat, quite accurately the uh, complexity uh, where we have the in detailed infill program, but also we're getting to learn and, and identify some interesting geology at the northern end. We then build up our structure map from the total horizontal curvature and a lineament map from the total horizontal gradients. And when we examine these, we see from the total horizontal gradients, it's mapping precisely the edges of, the, of this anticlinal structure, plus perhaps edges of additional structures away from the anticline, but at depth. We also see an apparent offset here, which is quite intriguing. But when we look at the structure map from uh, derived from the total horizontal curvature, we see where the wells here located in the Sambuton field that they're sitting in between where we have localized gravity highs. And this is where we have the pull apart basin development, and that's quite interesting. And then we bring in the additional detail from the lineaments, and we build them in and we can get, we have a ready-made data set to start performing our geological interpretation. The first area we will look at is that these, indeed, these localized pull apart basins. And as we see them clearly here, we ask about other, we ask if this is a similar expression down here at the south. And then as we go looking at the, the, the liniments, we can identify quite neatly that there are apparently offset patterns between the blue anomalies, good marker horizons to draw a potential outline for strikes of fault activity across the, the Pellerang anticlinal structure itself. And so we get the two of the trends that have been observed. We're now at the end of the presentation, and I hope I've shared a sense of FTG's value proposition for exploration, both in terms of the data analysis for subsurface imaging and the case histories described for the three exploration settings. In summary, we, 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 we worked through, talked briefly about geological plays, not too long, but most importantly about the exploration strategy. And I hope I've been able to show you FTG's place on that exploration strategy and how it, how it is being considered and being used to plan work programs on different projects around the world. I've also had a nice opportunity, and I'd like to say thank you for sharing with you some of the newer ideas we have for working with FTG. We know it's a multi-component data set, and we can get gravity, but now we can interrogate the total horizontal curvature and, and total horizontal gradients to build those important geological play maps directly from the data. And the three applications we had a look at, one was a big regional evaluation exercise looking for prospectivity, in a thrust and bolt set, fold belt setting. The second one was more targeted, looking for carbonate buildups and clastic sequences in an area where there is partial seismic constraint and well control, but much of it isn't covered with seismic, and the data is quite instrumental for that purpose. And then we finally had a look at a plot prospect play evaluation setting on the Pellerang antiformal anticlinal structure uh, in the upper Kutai basin itself, and how we can get grips and identify complexity on that structure that is not not visible with the, with the seismic, or only partially visible with the seismic, as you had. So we we'll return now to our exploration play model concept uh, diagram that we had and talked about at first, and we can see quite neatly and feel confident that FTG does indeed add value uh, in going from regional to basin evaluation. But I'd like to think from looking at the examples that we've shown that indeed it should also be considered as a viable technology when it comes to doing prospect, evaluating prospects 
and evaluating plays, especially where seismic control may be difficult to work with due to the nature of the geology or in general just access to the areas as a whole. So in summary conclusions, in this presentation I've described the FTG technology and what it offers for you, the geological ex exploration community, and how it has been deployed in different projects. I hope I've been able to sh successfully show that it can help with play mapping and exploration projects, not only across Ind Indonesia, but other projects that you may be working from other parts of the world. And that the value proposition is clear. It is a technology that brings a step up in resolution to your gravity data banks and brings clarity to exploration challenges faced in your work programs. Essentially, and in these trying times, we believe that FTG data is a key offering to advance exploration. It works within budgets, facilitating work programs by bringing clarity to play model challenges and bridges that gap when existing data is often not the right quality or not in sufficient supply. With that, I'd like to say thank you, and I'll happily be, be, take your questions and, and, and hopefully I'll be able to answer them all for you today. Thank you.